Salwete. I promised we'd do more pronouns, and here we are. So I said that there was several other demonstrative pronouns. Is, ella id, is one of them. That's the kind of the neutral one, the weakest one. And then these two demonstrative pronouns are a little stronger in meaning either this thing, you know, nearest me, or that thing away from me. So these are the ways you distinguish this thing closest to me and that thing over there. And they are hick for this and ille for that. And this is how they look when they're broken down. Here's the masculine feminine neuter. Hick, like hick weir, this man, okay? Uh, I use that a lot. It is hick, but it's hike femina, that woman. Hawk templum, this temple. I'm sorry, this is this woman, this temple. So hick, hike, and hawk is what they call these. And interesting thing to note on pronouns, for all pronouns, but especially these. You can just say hick, and it just means he. Just like is can mean he, or it can mean this when it's with a noun. Hick can mean he all by itself, or hick weir can mean this man. It can be used basically as a noun or as an adjective, and when they use it as a noun all by itself, um, if you're interested, they call that the they call that using it as a substantive or a substantival use, a grammar term, uh, for the, <clears throat> meaning this man. Uh, but you can put it with a noun, and then it's functioning as an adjective. So you can do that with all these, pretty much. Huyus is the same for all these. It's got the eus, and eus is a characteristic genitive form, like in eus back here on this other page. We have eus, right? There, a use, e i u, I mean, i u s. So, who uses this specifically of this thing? Huik, 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 for the dative. Hunk, hunk, and hunk, hawk. Notice dative usually ends in an M, but it sounds kind of funny to say, I mean, sorry, accusative usually ends in an M, but it sounds kind of funny to say hunk. So that just over time became a hunk, and you don't say hunk, it's hunk, and hawk is the same, neuters are always the same, right? And then the ablative is hok with a long o, hak, hok. So you can say hok tempore at this time, okay? Or hak nocte, this night. Hok die, hok die, which becomes ho die. Uh, for this day. Okay? In the plural, you got he, hi, and hike. And you might notice for the most part, these are following second and first declension. Hike's a little different. Hike, you might think of hike verba. These words, you know. Cum hike verba dixisit, when he had said these words. That appears in our Cambridge stories all the time. Hike, hawk is singular, hike, these things. And it can just mean, if you use hike by itself, it just means these things. So that's pretty common. And it doesn't help that it looks exactly like the feminine there, but that's just how it is. Horum, harum, and horum. Notice those are just following second declension. He's following second and first declension. Hos, has, and hike. Following first and second declension, nominative and the accusative are the same, and then he's notice dative and plural ablative is always the same. Following the first and second declension, okay, that means this, like this thing closest to me. Hick. Demonstrative pronoun meaning that is ille, okay, and this also can be used by itself or with a noun as an adjective. So, ille by itself just means he, just like hick by itself meant he. Specifically, it means like he closest to me and that guy over there. Hick and ille. But you could say, quis est ille? Who's that guy? Right? Quis est ille? Quis est hick? Who's this guy? If you say ille weir, means that man. You can say weir with it, but you don't need to. Ila, ila femina, or ila, just as in she, 
and then illud, illud is in that thing, illud templum. In the genitive, you notice we got that ius thing going on, ilius, ilius. Dative is ili to him. Nomen ili, the name to that guy is, you know, so and so and so. Accusative follows the same first and second declension, ilum, ilam. Ilud is just like neuter is always the same as the nominative, right? And then ilo, ila, ilo. If you want to say at that time, ilo tempore, ilo tempore. And then in our plurals, you're just going to follow first and second declension the whole way through, right? Ili, Uiri, those men. Ilai, feminai, those women. Ila, templa. Ila, verba, those words. Ilorum, ilarum, ilorum. Ilis, ilis, ilis. Is, just like is, but it's ilis. Ilos, ilas, ila. And ilis, ilis, ilis. So you're following you know, all the same patterns there as first and second declension. We can also do the intensive pronoun here. It is intense. When you want to uh, emphasize somebody in a sentence, you want to emphasize them. I would do this in class sometimes. I say, you know, oh, Barack Obama is coming to Cal High. You're like, Barack Obama apse? Barack Obama himself? Yes, Barack Obama apse. Ipse just intensifies it. He himself. Now, it's not the himself as in the reflexive himself. In English, the reflexive himself and he himself, they're the same form. But in Latin, one is intensifying and one is reflexive. So it's a little different. This ipse uh, follows this pattern. He himself is ipse. And again, you can use it by itself or with a noun. Ipsa, ipsum. And then it's just going to follow first and second, except for this eus is just like the up above, like ilius and huius and eus. Eus is the genitive, so it's pretty common to see that form in the gen genitive in these pronouns. Ipsi ends in an i, just like ili did. You might think of that as being like a third declension dative singular, uh, ends in i. And then you're, you're following first and second declension at this point. Um, 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 o, oh, ipsa. Ipso, ipso facto, by the fact itself, term that's come into English. And then for your uh, plurals, you're just following first and second declension. Again, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. It's just like he, you know, hick and ele, ipse is the same deal. Follows the same kind of pattern as first and second declension. And that does it for today. Walete.